Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom sucks. Is what people would say if they aren't creative at all, if they don't like going into a massive, rich, deep, open world and just doing nothing but exploring and discovering new parts, new areas, unlocking parts of the map and being rewarded if you prefer a game that holds your hand throughout, basically points you in the direction that you need to go and you go there. And if you aren't creative at all, if you aren't good at building things and thinking, right, how can I do this? How can I build this to get from there to there? What do I need to build? What do I need to construct? What tools do I have in my arsenal? What tools can I find around the area to build this? If you aren't about that at all, then this game really isn't for you. Just roaming around for hours and getting completely lost. That's half of the fun here. It throws you in to this vast open world that was already incredible. With Breath of the Wild, it was already a 10 out of 10. But this expands upon that. This is so much bigger in scope and size and everything that you do within the world of Hyrule. From the skies above, to the lands below, and even the lands below that. It is that incredible. There is no limit to what you can't do or create in this game. It's your own playground and it's entirely up to you how you do it, how you go about getting there. You're essentially creating your own adventure from shrines, puzzles, cooking, doing quests from main missions, side missions, discovering things on the map and just exploring really, fusing weapons together, using your ultra hand to mesh creations together to see what innovative thing you can come up with. As you master all of your abilities from ultra hand, fuse, recall, the ascend ability is really cool but I often forget to use it and it's where you look up and use that ability to go through the ceiling or go through the cave and then all of a sudden you've just teleported on top of that thing. You won't be depleting your stamina trying to climb up there. You can just use Ascend and then boom, you're on top. And just like in Breath of the Wild, completing shrines will reward you with hard upgrades and stamina upgrades. You can exchange your rewards from shrines to upgrade these and especially stamina comes in real handy as well when you're trying to scale mountains when you're sprinting around the map or swimming stamina can run out real fast legend of zelda has always been about swords and shields and just adventuring on but this game takes it to a whole different wacky level i don't know whether to be worried about the way some people are playing this game or just be impressed with the way some people are playing this game. What can be combined as you just traverse the world, no matter how wacky it may be, just playing with these new abilities. There's different towns, vendors to buy clothing and weapons, riding a horse through Hyrule on a peaceful summer's day, activating travel points on the map, then shooting up and scanning a portion of the map to map out the world around you, then slowly gliding or diving your way back to the ground, finding hidden Koroks, and there's also bigger Koroks where you need to reunite them with their friend any means necessary. Eating meals and cooking certain foods for heat and cold resistance, it's all still here. From Breath of the Wild, it's just there's so much more to do, and I have barely scratched the surface. So with that all being said, why are you still watching this video? Go and buy Tears of the Kingdom. It is the perfect sequel. It is the perfect Legend of Zelda game. It is the perfect Nintendo game that you need to play. Need I say more? No, I don't think so. We're done here. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time. Breath of the Wild was already a 10 out of 10, a perfect game when it launched with the Nintendo Switch on March 3rd, 
2017 and now in 2023 we are here with the sequel which takes everything that was so perfect about Breath of the Wild and it just takes this franchise in such a new and unique interesting direction that we have never seen before in a Legend of Zelda game introducing new ways of playing completely changing the formula of Legend of Zelda with so many surprises as you just play the game and continue on your adventure with a much bigger, richer world to explore with the same iconic locations of Hyrule from Breath of the Wild but some of these lands now will look a little different and the enemy variety has been vastly improved here as well. Weapons are still breakable. Weapons will still break and then you'll be frantically trying to look around for an enemy weapon to pick up or swap out a weapon for another weapon because that one is broken. Same with your arrows and bows, all can be broken. Or you can just fuse weapons together and come up with your own weird weapon. And it's just, oh, the opening scene of this game is one of the greatest cinematics that I have ever seen. And I, I thought, how are they going to open this game? when you think of all of the previous Legend of Zelda games and the way they opened that game up to put you into this world of exploration, how were they going to do that with Tears of the Kingdom? And they did do it differently. It was different from anything else that we have seen from a Legend of Zelda game. It literally just threw you in there. It was eerie. It was creepy. It was tense. There was tension there right from that opening cinematic and everything happens right in that opening scene as well. This moment as well, this jaw-dropping moment just like in Breath of the Wild is the moment it hits you that you know that you are in for something truly special. That you know that you are playing the next big Legend of Zelda installment and you are going to be in for a ride. Witness this moment in all of its awe. And speaking of moments, there is moments in the game where you are trying to figure something out or create something and you'll have a moment where it just clicks and those moments, oh, they are so satisfying. When you're trying to build something or do something or, or solve a quest by building something to get you out of somewhere and you, you find a way to do a shortcut or you find a way to build that, but building it in your own way that the game kind of is trying to push you away from, but you still manage to do it. Oh, those moments, so satisfying when everything just clicks. And the art style of this game, nothing really groundbreaking here, and it really doesn't need to be. It's essentially Breath of the Wild. The visuals are fantastic though. The way things move in the world and the subtle breeze of the grass the trees, the way the clouds move, the graphics aren't anything new, but I have somewhat still been blown away by them all over again, just like I was with Breath of the Wild. It's the subtle things, it's the small things that impress me most, and while Hyrule and exploring Hyrule pretty much remains more or less the same, what isn't the same is the depths, and oh boy, were we in for a surprise there? None of this was really revealed in the trailers leading up to the release. It's terrifying, exciting and intriguing all at the same time where you just want to keep exploring the darkness. It's basically the hellmouth of Hyrule. This game honestly makes Breath of the Wild seem small in comparison. Now, in the depths, you'll be using bright bloom seeds to light your way in the darkness with plenty of enemy camps and light routes to activate which will illuminate a big part of the area when you are down in the depths. Opening up a section of the map and it is huge down there so you'll be probably going around trying to activate a whole bunch of these things because it always feels rewarding doing so. It always feels like you're progressing it's just what can't we do in this game? Where can't we go? We can literally go everywhere. There's no limit to where we can't explore. And third party developers struggle to do this on Switch, to get a game like this 
running to a playable standard and an enjoyable standard on Switch. And here's Nintendo with a very ambitious sequel with so, so much happening and it locks and runs perfect. Yes, there is little dips. Yes, there is little texture issues here and there, but it's just so smooth. It works and I'm so impressed by the draw distance and everything going on in this game and the fact that it plays and runs so incredibly well. With all of the colours, the environments, the sounds, the visuals, from main missions, side missions, loads of things to discover in the world, numerous different weapons to use and fuse together to make one big ultimate weapon that shouldn't really be possible, but it is, and that's half of the enjoyment in this game. Just coming up with your own creations that technically shouldn't be possible, but you're making it possible. Nintendo has truly innovated like only Nintendo can do. And I was wondering, a lot of us were wondering, how are they going to be able to top Breath of the Wild, which is already a phenomenal 10 out of 10 game, and they have done just that with Tears of the Kingdom. There is no games out there like a Nintendo game. No one innovates like Nintendo does with their games. It's the perfect summer of gaming. The perfect summer of gaming with Nintendo on their new and exciting must play Legend of Zelda title. It'll keep you going for a long time. Even after you complete it, there will still be things in this world that you are finding. And I know a lot of people are still doing that with Breath of the Wild six years on. Legend of Zelda, Nintendo, the perfect summer. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for making me a part of your day and checking out my videos. Thank you. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time.